Okay, and numbers start counting. That means we're, yeah, we're streaming and it should show up over here momentarily. Come on, there it is. And then it should show up over here pretty quick. So yeah, there we go. Hi, Patty, welcome back. Hi, how are you, Doug? I'm good, I'm good, thank you. How are you? It's been Fine, a while. thank you. Yeah. So you were informed of uh, something today that was a little unsettling news. Could you tell us what happened? Um, I received a letter probably toward the end of last week and hadn't done anything about it till today, oh. stating that there was a security breach and that my health records were included in that breach and that the, um, the people sending the letter were telling me that they would cover any kind of credit monitoring. And when I went, they, they give you a number to go on to the website. And when I go onto the website, I got concerned because they wanted my social security number to be inputted on online. So I stopped and I called the number and talked to the operator and the operator said, and I said, you're, how do I know that this is valid? And I explained to her that I've had some issues in the past. And I said, why do I have to put my social security number online? And she said, well, you have to. And so she didn't give me any reassurance that that was um, a, a secure thing to do. And I said, well, I'll have to think about it. And that's when I contacted you. Okay. Okay, great. So you provided me some detailed information. So I'm going to switch over here to my second screen. Now, you're not going to be able to see this right now, but I think you'll be able to follow along with my okay. verbal description just fine because I think you already looked up this information. So I did a Google search for Trinity Health Acelion Data Breach Med City News. That's what you told me was yes. involved in this. And then on this other tab here, I have the news report of what that says. Now I'm going to scroll down to a particular paragraph that's of interest. And down here we have a message that says the provider found that certain files present on the software on January 20th were downloaded by an unknown user. The files contained protected health information including names, addresses, dates of birth, healthcare providers, medical record numbers, payment and claims information. The social security or credit card number of a small group was also exposed. And then the next paragraph, Trinity Health is offering complimentary access to identity or credit monitoring services to the affected patients. So now I'm, swi I'm switching back to the Zoom meeting here just to give you my feedback about it. So when you go to a website that you're confident is a valid credit monitoring service, and in the upper left-hand area where the address is that of their website, you should see a padlock or possibly HTTPS, but we don't see those letters so much so anymore. That indicates that it is a secure and encrypted site. That piece there means it's safe to type in your security, social security number on that web page, but that is assuming <laughs> That, that web page is not hosted by criminals or, or scam artists. So if you had information, for instance, from your healthcare provider that they actually published on their website, what credit monitoring agency that they're referring you to, something that you know is from your healthcare provider or the insurance agency or, or whatever. Because for instance, this this data breach says that it includes your addresses. Now it doesn't specifically say email address, but your email address certainly could be included in that. Now actually I, I didn't, you said you received a notice by US mail? Yes, and what's, okay. in, what's interesting about that is my daughter should have yeah. received one, but did not. Okay. I, I just saw my doctor who's part of the same health organization she didn't receive one. So okay. it appears that not everybody was notified. And Doug, they did list the three credit monitoring on the bottom of the page. But what I'm what I'm doing is getting in to their their is it Ashalon or whatever it is. It was that page that I had to put my social security in that I wasn't feeling comfortable about. Okay. Well if it is um Acelion's uh, page they already have your social security number. Okay. 
right? Right. Now, in the address, the URL up in the address bar, was it actually like acelian.org or .com? No, or it was like? that HTTPS information. I'm trying to think of, did I do that on my cell phone i may have done that on my cell phone um that's okay if you don't have that right now but i'm just bringing it up to you so that you confirm that because the body of the web page could falsely look like it's a cellion because the scam artist can easily design a web page that looks like the original company that you expect to be going to but that url address they they can't fake that they could come up with a url address that looks similar but not quite right so as long as the as you know that address is the correct url address for that company and you have the https or that padlock then yes it's safe to put in your social security number um, and necessary for credit monitoring because social security numbers is the way that credit is is tracked. Okay, so would you repeat that to me again? So you would say that if if that had the padlock or the HTTP the HTTPS, it would be safe for me to input my social security because you brought up a good point. They already have my social security. Yeah. Um, but they don't know that you're the person who's entering this now. Like a, a, a imposter could be trying to gain access to your credit by actually applying for credit monitoring. So it is appropriate and proper that they're asking you to enter your social security number. But it's not just the padlock and the HTTPS. All that tells you is that that website is encrypted and secure. But if the criminals created oh, an encrypted secure website, which they can do, <laughs> it's not hard to do, uh, then it could be phony. So you need to look at the address in the URL to the left of the .com or .org and validate that that is the correct domain name for the company that you're that you believe it to be, which I think you said is Acelion. Am I pronouncing yeah. that right? I think it is because I looked Close up enough. <laughs> Acelion. So my question to you would be, if, it, if you receive this letter, would you would you take their free monitoring or would you just say, hey? I might, I, I might opt for a monitoring service that I've heard of for a longer amount of time. Um, and the reason for that is because nobody, none of these big, huge companies are actually secure from breaches. Mm -hmm. The U.S. government is not secure from, from breaches. So I'm concerned about small companies that start up a new service, such, a, such as credit monitoring. And are they spending enough money in protecting their systems? from breach. Now, even the largest, most well-known names can still have breaches. So that it, it, it's, it's, <laughs> it's a lose-lose proposition in, on some levels. Um, but even if they get breached, the only thing that's going to happen is the criminals, again, get another source of your data. It's really not hard for the criminals to find your data. There's been so many breaches of so many large organizations that everybody should simply assume that their data is out there on the dark web. Now, you were informed about this data breach. Sometimes we get informed about data breaches for big companies that are discovering that they had a data breach years ago. Mm -hmm. So even though, for instance, you check to see that your data was included in this breach, your doctor was not, your daughter was not. Now it's quite possible that their data simply was not acquired by the criminals. And that may be why they weren't informed and, and given this offer. Um, but credit monitoring of some sort is a good idea. Now, actually in saying that, I have to admit, I'm not totally certain I have it. Now I occasionally get a, a message 
from a credit card company that is monitoring, is doing monitoring, but I didn't actually, I don't actually pay for that. Uh, I'm not quite as concerned about it as, as some people are because I do know that if a breach occurs, I'll be aware of it pretty quickly because I have all of my accounts configured in such a way that when a transaction occurs, I get a text message. Now that doesn't actually protect me against somebody opening an account in my name. So that still is an exposure and I probably will if I'm offered a free service, I might take it up, but actually I, I'm, I'm kind of really comfortable with paying for a service like that. But I want to get on to another piece. We're going to try to keep this down to 10 minutes. How are we doing? Well, we're almost 11 minutes. So let yep. me get on to this next piece because I really want to point this out. All these data breaches come with an offer of free data monitoring services. That's fine, well and good, but that doesn't begin to educate people the way they need to be educated. The scammers and con artists are getting smarter and more clever all the time. And so for instance, that you're at your US mail address, your name, your address. If you were to get a slick looking brochure in the mail, US mail next week, of a, a medical insurance provider that was gonna save you like 20, 30, 40% on your insurance. Could you be tempted to go ahead and, and call them and sign up for that service? It could be a scam. Mm. You know, the scam artists have this information. What clever ways could they use that information to try to reach out to you? Now, I haven't seen that kind of thing happening yet, but I'm, I'm really adamant that People need to be suspicious about everything that comes across them. Is this legitimate? Is there a way that I can double check this? We're given two-factor authentication for our passwords. Well, how about a two-factor authentication for anything that comes your way? I had a law office client that the senior attorney's email account was compromised. The criminals studied her emails that were coming in and out they sent an email appearing to be from the attorney to the out-of-office out bookkeeper inquiring about the balance in one of the bank accounts, a uh, trust account. And the bookkeeper replied, sent that amount back, and then got another message back, okay, I want you to go ahead and issue a check to such and such. The bookkeeper was suspicious and she never told me why she was suspicious. She called the attorney and found out, no, the attorney did not send that. The criminal did. The point there is that it used to be that when the criminals, and, and this was a few years ago, the criminals, when they get access to emails and email accounts or anything else, they can use very clever techniques to try to scam money out of you. We get phone calls all the time about, you know, your computer is infected. Let me connect remotely and I'll, and I'll clean it. Those kind of scams are, are dime a dozen. But there's a lot of more clever scams going around too. And there's all different levels of skills among scammers. As people become more educated to not fall for the computer support scam, the scammers are going to have to get more resourceful and more clever. They won't be getting this low hanging fruit. So the thing that I want to point out, uh, point out in this is that the credit monitoring is just the beginning, a basic step. More importantly, just learn to be skeptical about anything that comes your way and some second way to authenticate it. Now that doesn't take any time. That's no time, that's no expense, that's just education. And that's what I see that's the biggest thing that we're missing these days is providing the education to people. Be skeptical. They'll come at you all manner of different ways. Okay. And that's really that's really the reason why I wanted to have a conversation with you and put this out on a on a YouTube video. And uh, if you don't have any other questions, we can wrap this up. Oh, just a real quick question because yeah. I do um, I do need to wrap it up too. I have the second uh, authorization on. 
a lot of my information, but how would I do that for, what would you say, you know, if it was the bank, if it was, um, you know, my computer stuff, what else would you do? What else would come through that I would need second? Is there a list of things that you should be doing second authorization on? Well, the two-factor authorization is for anything that there's a password involved. Okay. So what I'm what I'm saying here about a different type of second factor authentication is, for instance, you get something in the U.S. mail. In fact, I I did this when the EIP card came for the economic impact payment. When mm -hmm. I received that, I my first reaction was questioning: Is this a scam? So I was kind of careful to double check. I go do a Google search and check out the phone number and, and find some other way to validate, yeah, this is a real thing, it's happening. Cards are being sent that that are that are printed as debit cards. I think there was something that really looked fishy about the card. I um, don't quite remember what it was, but I don't think it had my name on it. Did they not have names? I'm not sure what it was, but it looked fishy to me. So I, I get, um, well, even flyers on my door offering to do work around uh, around my house. Would I call the number and say, yeah, come on and do that? Uh, they could be casing my house for a burglary. Uh, so I'd be wanting some references. Now, that's a, that, that's a, a pain in the butt in my mind <laughs> to, to try to get some kind of r referrals or references. If I were to search for a contractor in Fresno to install windows and I find a company name that I'm not familiar with. How about doing a little research, find out how long they've been at that location? Do they actually have a, a, a storefront? Do they have any references? Uh, rather than just calling them and say, yeah, come on over and give me an estimate and then you sign papers with them here in my house, I have no idea where to go, go get them, where to, where to track them down. I actually did sign up for a solar panel installation a few years, two or three years ago, and they came to my house and then some fishy things were happening. There were delays and such, and I started checking to find out where are these people out, and I couldn't find any good address for them, and I just canceled it. Well, at that point, I had not paid any money, so and they had already breached their dates, so I got out of it, but that was kind of a lesson. I thought maybe that was kind of foolish. I should do a little more checking. So let's just be cautious that whatever offer or contract or something that's coming your way, whether it's by mail or 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 text or a bank, I even if I get a text from my bank with some kind of message and it's got a link for me to click on, I don't want to do that because I'm not certain that's coming from right. the bank. Right. So I'd rather go to their website and log in and, and go that direction. Okay. So don't use a link within an email or a text to go to some place that's claiming that they are a service or a person that you're, you know, that you know. So it, it, it's, it's, it's really a sad, anger-inducing thing to uh, have to start forming ideas like that, but I get, I, I've, I've had, I had a phone call from a, an attorney client of mine just within the last couple of months. He had a, a tech support scammer connected to his computer at that moment, still connected, and he got suspicious and he called me, he said, what should I do? <laughs> Disconnect from the internet, <laughs> unplug it. it, it and this, the, the surprising thing, and the reason why I tell the story, and I don't think he would mind me telling the story, particularly I'm not, I'm not giving his name, is that he has, he has fallen for that before. Um. And there is a sense in many people of wanting to believe what's coming your way. And maybe there's certain things that you've been trained that you know that you're not going to fall for. But then there might be something else that comes your way that you're not trained to resist yet. And, and the thing that I'd like to see talked about more is, is encouraging people to be uh, skeptical of 
things that come your way and just do a little due diligence by doing some kind of research or look up and become aware that that URL address up in the address bar of your uh, of your web page is uh, of your browser is important information and you need to understand that where it says dot com the part to the left of that is the important part that's the part that cannot be faked um, so know that that is correctly the address of the company that you believe you're dealing with because okay. they they do the bad guys do fudge that they'll they'll come up like I'm looking at Med City News right now so they might come up with medctynews.com and and have phony stuff there and then another thing that the bad guys do there's all kinds of different bad guy guys is all these different ads and and pictures and stories on here they want you to click on sometimes the bad guys can temporarily change the code that's behind that and that takes you to one of those screens that says your computer is infected call this number oh yeah yeah or there's a warrant for your arrest irs is coming for you and all that kind of stuff okay. and typically all you have to do there is close the web browser and then reopen it and and you're fine big problem there is internet explorer some people resisting going to Microsoft Edge, Internet Explorer is just rampant with vulnerabilities in that way. So keeping your computer up to date with security updates, using the, uh, you know, good browsers, um, meaning current Microsoft Edge or Google Chrome or even any of the other uh, lesser known browsers are okay as long as they're current. Okay. All right. Thank you. All right, you're welcome. I'll go ahead and sign off with you and I'm going to interact a little bit with the chat room over here. You may not be aware, but we've got a, 10 people watching us live right now. Okay. Um, and then I'm going to switch over here. And Thank you so much session. for your help. Thank you're you welcome. Help. See you. See you another time. Okay, bye, -bye. bye. Okay, chat room, I'm going to come over and look and see what you've been saying over here. Um, that was just a quick session. I uh, obviously you've seen this story. So Catherine, hi, Jeff, Ryman, hi, Atex, Frankie B, uh, Jeff, Catherine, let's see, you got a message directly to me, Jeff, where you're saying still have monitoring from my ID care due to a government breach many years ago. Oh, good grief. Hold on. I got to shut Alexa off. Okay, I muted my microphone there for, to do that. I yell it. I get to yell at her. She she can't yell back at me. Uh, let's see. You want to use this H, privacy .com. Oh, privacy.com. I use that. I use the privacy.com credit cards. Uh, the prepaid credit cards. Yes, yes, like gift cards from Frankie. Always a health. You, you know, one of the ideas that I had uh, since there was health information. Uh, let's suppose the bad guys there are sifting through all this information that was retrieved from the data breach. And let's suppose they take a whole bunch of people that have a similar condition, send them a U.S. mail or even an email saying, we're inviting you to become part of a, of a clinical trial on such and such and so and so. And they get you really deep. There's an application fee of $85 or whatever it might be. It's all kinds of clever things that they could be doing that. I'm sure we're going to be getting hit with more things like that. So always a health uh, concern of mistrust like Appenzell or Senenhund, a Swiss cow guard dog. Hello, Greg guy. And uh, let's see who else we got. What else we got? Some more hellos. And Tim Sowell. Hi, Tim. And we just finished up there. So if you didn't get in at the beginning, you'll have to go back and re-watch. says he gets that stuff all the time. And William Dawson. Hello, William. And Catherine Hippa Info. Okay, so we're um, done here for this session. Tomorrow, I have a session scheduled with, and Tim Sal, you know, John Krikorian. John Krikorian is reporting that his home laptop is uh, very sluggish. 
So 10 a.m. tomorrow, Pacific time, we're going to do a session connected remotely to him and a live YouTube session trying to diagnose what is causing his uh, sluggishness. So maybe some of you can come join us for that. All right, so I'll hit up the email address here. That's how to reach me for anyone who would like to request a free support session via Zoom and YouTube. And thank you everybody in chat for being with us and I'll see you another time. Have a great day. Goodbye.